whatever, because it's really uh, it it uh, well for me in my experience during uh, the Christian Life program I attended back in 1999 really hit me uh, 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 personally of, of how I realized about uh, faith, my faith, my personal faith, and about how important repentance is. You know, looking into the mirror, looking the man in the mirror, as, uh, another Michael Jackson so you could jimbo a while ago, <laughs> uh, loves the food. But yeah, it's, it's really a, a, a meaningful for me uh, uh, talk in this uh, CLP. Uh, but uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce our next speaker. Uh, he's been married to Sister Connie for 23 years now. Wow. Uh, he's been going strong. Uh, and he's, uh, uh, he attended also his uh, Christian Life program back in 2001. So uh, he's been uh, with the community for that many years. They have, they have one son, Brian, who's 20 year, 22 years old. Um, uh, I hope I'm not dating you, bro, but... Uh, you he, are. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, he looks like just an older brother of Brian. <laughs> and, uh, all right, yeah, so uh, to give us uh, the next talk about repentance and faith, uh, it's uh, our dear brother, no other than Dindo Bautista. So uh, thank you, Brother uh, Marvin, for the nice introduction. Um, thank you all for uh, joining today. Um, fourth talk is about repent repentance and faith, right? Um, so anyone of you thinking about the football games going on right now? Maybe? No? You are? Jets? Yeah. <laughs> We're winning, man. We're, winning, we're, winning. we're good. We're good so far. We're in the fourth quarter. There's five minutes left. 28 20. So, this Patrick's doing pretty good. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So, that's what I was So, because I was thinking about it myself, too. So, might as well get it out. And so, let's talk about repentance and faith, right? So, in, in the last three uh, previous talks, like I said, like Jim Boy stated earlier, we talked about God's love, right? By sending His only Son to save us from uh, our sins, right? And the mistakes that uh, we made. Talk about who Jesus Christ is. Talk about, you know, the questions regarding is He a lunatic? Is He Lord, right? And we, we figured that He is a Lord. Um, and He doesn't lie either. And Brother Jimbo talked about a relationship with Him talks about what it means to be a Christian uh, in this world today. Um, it talks about um, the definition of Christianity is the same as before as, it's, as it is now. It's not changed, only the world is changing, um, but it's still the same thing that we're being asked to do, which is to look into ourselves, to look into what we have been doing, and hopefully we're going to repent and we're going to have faith uh, going forward, right? So in this talk, we're going to talk about what is repentance, right? What are, what are we repenting from, right? And what is faith? And all these two things combined together, what's the consequences? What's in it for us, uh, making these changes in our lives, right? So what is repentance? Let's, let's you know, just quickly define what repentance is, right? Repentance comes from uh, the Greek word for, uh, for repentance is metanoia. Metanoia means it's a change in mind, right? Um, I also looked up uh, Mr. Webster. Well, it's not Mr. Webster anymore. Google. Google says it's. I'm sorry. Or urban dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I keep uh, aging myself, I guess. But uh, I used Google. And he says, well, it's, it's really more about a remorse, a contrition, regret, shame, right? Or, or feeling guilt uh, on something, right? But is it really just this, right? It says here, it is not simply a confession of wrongdoing, but a change in direction in our lives, right? Mind you, it's not 90, 90 degree change in direction. It's not 360 either, <laughs> right? We're talking here about 180 change, right? It's, it's going here, we're going back. 
right? Changing the direction of our lives, right? We need to ma make significant changes in the way we live our life. And that means dropping an old set of ideals and values, right? It means it affects the way we think, it affects the way we act, it affects the way our, our attitudes are, our motives, our thoughts and behaviors. Kind of like in football, right? Jess has always wanted to, to win football games year after year. There's always a, the next year, right? We always talk about it for Jess fans. But it's, it's the same thing that they always talk about, right? It's the same thing when they say, you know what? Next year we're going to do this. Next year we're going to do this. Unfortunately, we keep doing the same thing, so it's not changing, unfortunately. Um, but we did it uh, for, for our lives. What we're saying here is that personally, each one of us has to look into ourselves. Personally, we have to understand the things that we have been doing in our lives and make a change, right? It is turning away from sin, wrongdoing, and running your own life. It means turning a life of obedience to God. So two key things here that, that, that uh, is quite impactful to me, right, when I went to the CLP. One is obviously turning away from sin. We'll talk about sin a little bit later. Wrongdoing and running your own life. That's one big key thing about repentance, right? Usually, as human beings, we talk about, you know, I live my own life, I know, I know what to do, I, you know, I, I do good, I should be good, right? We talk about our capabilities to do things. Little do we know, sometimes we forget that we need to turn a life of obedience to God. Because what society is telling us now is different from what the teaching uh, that God has given to us. And we're going to talk about that later again. But what is sin, right? I, uh, I actually looked up the definition of sin. There's a, a book, and I'm not selling anything, right, by the way. It, it's just something that like, we have in our house. It says, Catechism for the Catholic Church. So it talks a little bit about what is sin, right? What, what, what does it mean? So it says here, Sin is an offense against reason, truth, and right conscience. It is failure of, genu of in genuine love for God and neighbor caused by perverse attachment to a certain good. Sin is an offense against God. It says, against you, you alone, have I sinned and done that which evil is inside. Sin sets itself against God's love for us and turns our hearts away from it. In this proud self-exaltation, sin is diametrically opposed to the obedience of Jesus, which achieves us our salvation. So, so, so when we commit sin, we're actually saying whatever we've talked about in the first three talks, we're basically saying we're not following what, what God has given us, what God has provided to us. He gave us His love. He gave us His only Son to prove it. And yet, we do things that are not in, in, in line with what we're supposed to be doing. Right. Right? So, we need to turn away from double-mindedness and lukewarmness. Sometimes, you know, I know it happens to me a lot, uh, once in a while as well, where I have to doubt myself, right? I have to doubt, I, sometimes I doubt uh, what the teachings are. And it pains me to, to say it, but there are peaks and valleys of, of my faith sometimes. Right? There's lukewarmness, right? We, we, we're either hot, hot or cold sometimes, right? And if we look at the Bible, what, what does it mean when we say lukewarmness, right? In, in, in Revelations uh, chapter 3, verse 15 to 16, it says, I know your works. I know you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either hot or cold. So, because you are lukewarm, either hot or cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. That's what God said in Revelations. 
Further, I, I, I kind of read the, 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 the verses that are in the, in, in the Revelation. It also says, For you say, I am rich and affluent and have no need of anything. Yet you do not realize that you are rich, beautiful, poor, blind, and naked. To those whom I love, I reprove and chastise. Be earnest, therefore, and repent. So what is repentance? What is not repentance, right? Repentance is not dependent on feelings. We, we try to repent not because we feel happy today. We try to repent because somebody else is telling us uh, that makes us um, feel good about today. But when, when, when things uh, hit the fan and problems occur, we start, we start going back to the way it is before. So it's not dependent on feelings. It is also not being sorry for sins because we are afraid of the consequences. Usually, uh, growing up obviously in the Philippines as well, uh, you always uh, get that thing from your parents when they say, oh, you're not supposed to do this because you gotta go to hell or otherwise you gotta do this, you gotta be this, you gotta be that, right? That's how we're kind of brought up a little bit. But repentance means it's, it's not only that, right? We're not, we need to uh, define or understand what it means to, to sin as opposed to what the consequences would be, right? Um, sorry. We should not confuse sorrow for sin with sorrow of the consequences of sin. Main thing here is that we should hate sin by itself. So what must we do to repent, right? First of all, we need to be honest, right? We need to admit that we sin in our lives. Obviously, this is a common theme that even uh, you see it in movies, you see it in documentaries and things of that sort. We talk about, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous sometimes, right? The first thing that they always tell them is for them to identify that there's a problem. Same thing here with us, right? We need to admit that we sin. We need to admit that we make mistakes no matter what. We need to be honest, right? We need to look into ourselves, look at the mirror, right? Are we happy with the person that we're looking at in the mirror? Right? After all, kind of like another uh, song, song goes, right? We, 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 we could only make a change, right, if we look ourselves in the mirror, if we're happy. Right? If you want to make a change, you look, your, look, look, look someone in the mirror. That person is the first person that needs to change. Obviously, exercising, uh, exercising humility is part of it as well. Right? We need to be willing to change. And be willing to receive help from the Lord to change. Don't expect to be able to change all by yourself. This is a common misconception, right? Uh, in our lives today, we're thought to, you know, to, to all the things that um, another person could do, you could do better. Which I kind of agree in those things, but sometimes we need help of other people. We do. That's why we're given our wives, we're given our, our partners, our spouses in life. Right? But that's why we have friends. We have to renounce sins, right? We need to actively turn away from sin and decide not to do it again, right? This is the same thing I was telling to you guys a while ago where we renounce the sin and yet three or four days down the road because we're not, we don't feel that well or we don't like the way things are going, we go back to the same things again. Right? That's not repentance, right? We need to ask for, uh, for God's forgiveness. In, in, one, uh, in uh, 1 John verse 9, it says uh, in the Bible, right? Uh, it says, The true light which, ev which enlightens everyone was coming to the world. 
that means God is coming to the world. We need to make amends. We need to make. We need to change our lives and align ourselves to Him who's coming. Obviously, the one of the uh, uh, most known parables in, in the Bible is the story of the prodigal son. Well, we all know that, right? I don't have to explain to you what that is. Uh, but basically, it's about forgiving um, the father, forgiving his uh, his son despite all the things that he has done, because he loves that person. Same thing with us, right? We go, we 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 approach our God. We ask for forgiveness to change our lives, to help us change our lives, and and I'm pretty sure He will forgive. Uh, there's some specific sins that, that we need to renounce. Non-Christian religions. Okay, let me explain a little bit about this. It's it's a little bit of a uh, uh, it's too wide. I I thought. The, the description of this. It, it, it basically just talks about things were transcendent, transcendent, or something like that, right? Um, it, 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 it's, we need to turn away from, from spiritualism, witchcraft, um, Freemasonry as well. I, I know Freemasons and all those things, right? New Age and transcendental meditations. Those are the things that we need to stay away from. Right. If we are involved with that, uh, we need to uh, maybe uh, speak with a priest or something like that. But uh, that's, that's something that we need to take away, to get away from, right? One, obviously the next one is spiritualism and occult. Right? If we're uh, talking about um, if we're talking about witchcraft, fortune telling, CSS, um, you know, Teenagers who uh, play the spirit of the glass, all those kind of good stuff, right? I mean, bad stuff. Um, we need to stay away from those things, right? If we are doing it, please renounce it. Sexual wrongdoing, you know what, what, what that is. Serious crimes, obviously. Drunkenness and usage of drugs. So what does repentance mean in, the, in all the discussions that we just had, right? One is we need to have a true sense of one's guilt and sinfulness, an apprehension or a, a comprehension of God's mercy in, in Christ. We need to have, uh, it is an actual hatred of sins, right? And turning from it to God, and last but not least, a persistent endeavor after a holy life, in walking with God in the way, in the way of His commandments. Right. This particular piece, actually, I just I, I got it from what I was reviewing through or, or gathering some info regarding repentance and, and Google. Same thing with Google. Um, this, to me, actually um, summarizes what repentance is from a Christian perspective. So, we're saying here is that repentance only becomes complete after we totally turn away from evil and accepting Jesus as our Lord. Right? There's no ifs and buts about it. Right? We need to have a total transformation in our lives. Um, I know it's, it's not easy. It is difficult. It takes us a while. Right? But we have to make that conscious decision to turn our lives from sin. Well, what that means is that our lives need to come under His management. We need to let Jesus run the run of things, basically. We need to give a, a total, um, we need to give up our lives totally to the will and plan of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. If we are to be His sons, if we are to be His sons and daughters, we need to give up our lives. It's, it's easier said than done. I know that, right? with all the different um, things that hit us on a daily basis, things that, that derail us from doing the right thing sometimes. But you know what? We need to hang on, right? We need to, to have faith, right? If we accept Jesus, we need to have faith. Faith on what? What, right? It's basically accepting 
the gospel. It's, it's, it's the belief in the gospel, which is the good news of the salvation of Jesus Christ. So this is what faith is all about, right? Faith is the, uh, is the belief in the messenger, Jesus, and in the message that he brings. What is the message that he brings? Because it's about love, right? It's about hope. Faith means that uh, it's just not believing in our minds. It's, an, it's not an intellectual belief. It's, it's, it means that Jesus is the Savior, right? But we also need to believe that in our hearts, right, that He needs to be our personal Savior. Faith is a personal act and a decision, right? Uh, obviously, you know, it, it has several aspects to it. It's as described in Revelations 20, uh, uh, Revelations 3, verses 20, right? Um, it says in there, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will enter his house and dine with him and he with me. Do you, do you see the uh, a picture that you sh they usually uh, show in some documentaries about Jesus Christ? Or there's there's that picture where where Jesus Christ is standing on a door, right? See, see me knocking at the door. But if you look at the door itself, it doesn't have any knob to open it up. Have you seen that somehow? Mm -hmm. It's basically Jesus Christ. There's a, a door right next to him, right? And he's there. He was about to knock. Right. Have you seen that? Well, what that is, 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 is that the picture, is, I don't have the picture unfortunately. It, it's basically, it's a, it, it's a thing where he's, trying, he's knocking at the door, but there's no knob to it to open it. What that means is that it's somebody from the inside who needs to open it. Open that door. Jesus is there, he's knocking on you. He's, he's knocking on on your door, the door to your heart already, right? So it's something like like Brother Jim already said a while ago. God already gave His only Son. He made the first move. He gave us love. He gave us everything that we we, we would need in this world, right? But it's now up to us to reciprocate that call. It is a definite act. Obviously, it's a definite act, right? It's we need to open the door uh, if Jesus Christ needs to come to our lives. Right? It is an individual act. Right. Um, your wife is going to do that for you. Your kids are going to do that for you. Other people cannot do that for you. It has to be a personal uh, decision. It is also a deliberate act. We do not have to wait for sure supernatural light to flash before our eyes, right? Or an emotional experience to overtake us. It's not again, like I said, it's not about feelings here. We already we already know that Jesus came to this world and died, died for our sins. He is just now standing outside of our door, knocking. It's an urgent act as well. You know why? Because tomorrow's never promised to us. We don't know. For, for my case, I, I could be not here tomorrow, right? Um, we don't know that. So we need to make a decision. Future is uncertain, and time is passing away. It is an indispensable act as well. It is part of our double uh, action response. We repent, and we need to believe in the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is a step needed to receive all that God has promised. Faith is relying on God, on all that God has said. Right? And the best example of that, obviously, is Peter walking in water. Right? When Jesus told him, go out of the boat, take your first few steps until Peter had a doubt in his mind, then he started sinking, right? 
So what is uh, what what fate is not, right? Again, same thing. Uh, like I said a while ago, it's not a feeling, right? We we accept God's uh, God's word as true, no matter how we feel, what we feel. It is not wishful thinking either. It is not based on illusions or personal desires, but on God's word. It's not what I say here, really. It's based on what this book said, right? the Bible. This is it. This is all we need. It's not a blind leap either, right? Peter has stepped on to the water because Jesus invited him to. We too could step on the water. Why don't we make that leap? Why don't we, we take that first step and, and, and say, you know, Jesus, you are my Lord. Let me do this. Take, let me take these first steps and take hold of my life. It's, it's a big deal, right? It's hard for us to, uh, to let go. But we need to do it because God has promised us new life. Faith in accepting that life and letting God show us how to live it. We must be willing to do whatever God wants us to do. Well, wants us and actually do it. It needs to, we need to take that information and take those, those words into our lives and actually do something about it. This is what we're saying, brothers and sisters. The first few talks, it, it talk, like I said, it, it talks about um, what God has given us. He's asking us now to take that next step and say, your turn. I did mine, you do yours. So if we do um, repent and we have faith, what are the consequences, right? It's specifically um, um, defined or, or had an example explained in Acts 16, um, verses 31. It's, and, it's, and it says, and they said, believe in Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. Simple. Basically what that means is a promise of salvation. The promise of salvation from sin, Satan, and death. Right? In, 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 our sec in the secular world today, it all, always talks about death. It's a culture of death. Everything is a culture of death. Instead of talking about the culture of life, we're not talking about culture of death, abortion, all those kind of uh, things. When we do repent and have faith, there's a promise of forgiveness and eternal life with God. Similarly, in Luke uh, chapter 11, verses 9 to 13, it is basically... Uh, the answer to a prayer, right? And let me, I would like to read that to you because this to me is one of the verse, best verses that I could ever have, that I had, that I learned when I joined, uh, when I had CLP, right? And I'd like to share that with you. Uh, it's in Luke 11. It says, And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find, knock, on the, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and for the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son or daughter a snake if, when he asks for a fish? Or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how, how, good, how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Okay. We'll be talking about what our new life would be in the Holy Spirit um, in the next few talks. And believe me, brothers and sisters, having that life with the Holy Spirit it is something that 
we in, in, in the community is able to share with one another. We share the joy, we share in you know, pretty much everything, um, living the good life of a Christian. So in conclusion, more than 2,000 years ago, Jesus already summoned the call for repentance. Repent, make that change. Right? It's the same call to us today. He's asking you, brothers and sisters. He's asking all of us to repent, to change. We're called to turn away from sin and all, all obstacles to God and to accept Jesus as Lord. Hopefully we respond positively. God promises us salvation from sin, forgiveness and reconciliation, eternal life, and the power of the Holy Spirit for our lives. Hopefully we accept the challenge. I encourage you, brothers and sisters, to accept the challenge. We change our lives. We, we, we need to believe in Jesus Christ. Not only, not only saying it, we're actually doing it. And showing it to the world what it means to be in the light and love of Christ. That's the only way we could change the world. We could make America great again, like they said. Right? That's the only way. Thank you. So, once again, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, it's like we did the uh, previous talks after hearing it. Um, we'd like you again to uh, uh, break out into your... Uh,